Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all joining. I think we're a relatively big group. We'll see how many people are coming. Um, I would love to see you share your level in the chat. Uh, you can use the chat by clicking at the bottom of your window where you have the symbol chat. And please make sure that the chat is uh, set to send to everyone and not just send to uh, panelists and host or something like that. It should be uh, set to send it to everyone. And um, yeah, please uh, share in the chat what is your level of German. I think that would be a bit interesting for me to know. So A1, A2, B1, B2, or beginner, advanced, intermediate, whatever you prefer. Okay, we have a lot of people. B1, somebody B2, that's very good. A1, okay, yeah, okay, it's a very mixed group, I would say, great. Um, yeah, my name is Werner Scala, I'm the co-founder and, um, uh, yeah, the co-founder of the online language school and publishing house Scapago. We make textbooks and uh, online video courses for learning languages, and the special thing is that our uh, courses are always based on a coherent story instead of random dialogues, so it's a bit more fun to uh, to learn a language. Um, yeah, I will show you what we have for German a little bit later, um, but I'm happy that you are joining me for some exposure therapy to uh, uh, yeah against uh, fear of German uh, cases. Um, who of you has ever been in the situation that you uh, refrained from speaking or that you wanted to say something in German and then you didn't because you were not sure of the correct ending? You were not sure whether, yeah, should you use accusative or dative and what is the right ending and so on. And you just put yes in the, in the chat um, if that is the case for you or yeah, okay. Um, I don't have, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I cannot see you because we're so many. So we have this format where I can only communicate with you in the, in the chat. Yes, okay, many of you. So yeah, great. <laughs> You've come to the, to the right place. Um, I think there are basically three problems that we have with uh, accusative and dative and uh, all these horrible and a little bit genitive. I'm also going to uh, talk about genitive a tiny little bit today. Um, number one, when you're making a sentence, which case should you choose? Yeah, is it is it dative? Is it accusative? Is it genitive? Sometimes difficult to find out. Then once you know, okay, it is dative, but yeah, okay, cool. But what is the right form? Yeah, what is the right ending? Um, and this can be complicated. And of course, both of these things I'm going to show you like a little bit of a system. Um, but uh, well, as I said, it is complicated, and therefore I have the third question, the one that is usually neglected it a little bit, and that is, when should you even care? Um, because uh, I would like to invite you to have a slightly broader look at grammar, particularly for the cases, and but also for grammar in general. Um, German grammar is way too complicated and way too overwhelming for you to get everything right, especially at beginner level. Yeah, when you're A1, A2, B1, um, then um, it's, uh, it's just too much and it cannot possibly be expected of you to know everything and get everything right. So I have this uh, little system where I group grammar a little bit by what I call red, yellow, and green. Red grammar means it's absolutely essential. You need to know that because if you get that wrong, then people will not understand you or you will sound extremely weird. Uh, yellow grammar, well, if you get that wrong, then it sounds clumsy. Um, maybe a native speaker has to think twice, but you will still be understood and it's not a big deal. And green grammar is the somehow nice to have. Uh, green grammar is where I say, well, if you want to speak or write German correctly, then you should know that and you should be able to, to do it. But if you make a mistake, I might not even notice. Unfortunately, the good thing about, uh, about the cases is that much of it is actually green grammar. Look at this example. Mit einem Freund. Okay, that's the correct one. If you say mit einem Freund, I might not even be able to hear that you made a mistake. 
even if you say mit ein Freund, yeah, the, so these two, the black ones, they're wrong. Um, but uh, as a native speaker, I might not even be able to, to hear the problem, to hear that there is an issue. Yeah. Um, so what I would like to invite you to is when you're speaking German, you follow Alexander's advice. He says, I just speak and don't care if I sound stupid. Germans tend to understand me because that's the point about dative and accusative. You will not even sound stupid. If you make a mistake of that kind, uh, you will not even sound stupid. It's, um, it's a tiny mistake in my ears. It's not a very big deal. When should you care? You should care, as I say, when it's too late, meaning don't push the information about the cases to the side uh, completely, but reflect upon it after you have said something. So look at this tiny little dialogue. You said, ich komme mit meinem Freund. Okay, it's wrong. Um, and uh, the German native speaker that you're talking to is replying, oh, du kommst mit deinem Freund. And you're here, ah, mit deinem Freund. And that's the moment where your brain can go and can say, ah, yeah, of course, mit. Huh? Mit is always dativ, so dativ, so that I should have said an M here. But it's not a big deal. It will not stop you from speaking. You speak, you make a mistake, afterwards you think, not the other way around. Um, some people will object and say, yeah, well, shouldn't I care about grammar at all? And this is, of course, not the point. Um, I do believe that grammar is important. I'm not a fan of these uh, modern alternative approaches where they don't teach you grammar and you're going to learn the language naturally. And that's all nice and fine. But if you learn a language as an adult and you want to achieve a certain degree of mastery, you will need to know um, how the language functions. And you should know how the language functions. It's interesting. I mean, isn't it? The problem is that in, uh, in, in school and when we teach languages, we expect students to get it right. And that's wrong. So study the cases. I will show you a bit more about, uh, about them later. Study them, but don't be afraid when you get it wrong, because that's just absolutely fine. When you're speaking, when you're writing, I invite you to think about them. I invite you to, to think about them so you will learn it in the long run. Because of course, when your German is getting really good, when you're going beyond B1, reaching B2, you want to get the cases right, especially when you're writing. When you're speaking, still making a few mistakes with it, fine. When you're writing, you would like to get it right. And that means you should think about it. But when you're drafting an email or a letter or something, you can always, um, you can always uh, take a little bit more time. But when you're speaking, the problem is that it will stop you from speaking because you want to be spontaneous. When you want to be spontaneous, this is what you do. You care when it's too late, okay? Traditional schools usually don't do that. I call it therefore the original sin of, um, of uh, German teaching, that we care way too much uh, about dative and, and accusative and genitive. Uh, uh, genitive, by the way, when you're speaking, you can always avoid it with von plus dative, and uh, that's absolutely fine. So genitive should bother you even less um, when, you are, when you are speaking. German. Um, if you want to uh, focus on grammar, or you should, as I said, you should focus on the red grammar. You should focus on the grammar that is really, really important in German, that will lead to misunderstanding, and that's verbs. I often see students who have this issue with that they don't know the verb endings 100% correctly. Yeah, you say, ich spreche, du sprichst, not something like ich sprichst or du spreche. When I hear that, I get angry uh, because it's difficult. Like when you say, ich sprichst, what do you mean? Am I talking or supposed to talk or are you talking? Okay, the verbs are underrated. Dative and accusative um, are overrated. Okay, um, great. Um, so, so much about caring. Uh, now, I would still like to show you some theory. So how do you uh, know which one you should pick? Um, and there is a system. And there is a system that you can have in your head. Three questions. Number one, is there a preposition, like one of these small words, like for, because, while, and so on, uh, that will show me uh, which case I have to use. So we have prepositions in German that always require 
a specific case. And that's why I call them unambiguous. Um, for example, MIT, yeah? MIT is always dative. Whatever happens with MIT, uh, you don't need to think what is the role of the thing or person of the MIT, it's always dative. Nothing to think about, very easy. Um, then we have these horrible uh, dual prepositions. Um, the ones that can either take dative or accusative, uh, depending on whether something is moving or something is not moving. And that's a shitty one. Um, because, well, the movement is still a little bit doable. If you say, um, ich hänge das Bild an die Wand, okay, the, build, the, the, the picture is still moving, that works. Um, das Bild hängt an der Wand, well, it's not moving, okay, so then it's dative, good. But what if I say, ich denke an dich? Is that a movement? Is my thought moving or is my thought not moving? Difficult, okay? I will come back in a minute on how you can remember these. Um, I have, um, uh, yeah, there's a mistake here, actually, a typo. You see, ich, bin in, ich gehe in den Wald oder ich bin in dem Wald, and this we can draw together to have this im, and uh, this is what you have to think about. Are you moving? Are you not moving? Okay, um, well, and if you have no preposition at all, you have to think whether there is a direct or an indirect object, yeah? Uh, what does that mean? Ich sehe dich, you're the object of my seeing, you are being seen, so you're the object of what I'm doing. Um, this is a direct object, and sometimes we have two objects. Ich gebe dir den Schlüssel. Um, the two objects are you, you're getting the key, and the key. And what is the direct and what's the indirect object? Well, think of for whom it is more dramatic. For you, having the key doesn't change your life. Well, no, you have a key before you didn't have it. But think of it for the key. The key is changing owner. Yeah, so for the key, it's very, it's, it's a dramatic uh, event in, in its life. So therefore, the key is the direct object, and you are the indirect object. And direct objects are in accusative. Uh, indirect objects are in dative. Usually, when we can only have one sort of object, it's an accusative object, like ich sehe dich. But we have a few verbs that can only take a dative object. Okay, ich helfe dir. Uh, why? It's usually verbs where you somehow benefit, like you're benefiting from my help, um, or you're benefiting because I'm giving you the key. So then usually we, uh, we use dative. It's very beautiful, the concept, isn't it? Um, okay, but how do, you, how do you memorize that? Or how do you remember that? Uh, there is no magic formula except this one. You need a lot of repetition and ideally some emotional connection. What I mean by this is you need to hear ich bin im Wald or ich spreche mit dir so many times that it comes to your mind spontaneously. And ideally, you do, not, um, you do not only learn this phrase completely isolated, but you learn it in some context. Um, for example, I don't know, the moment you fell in love with uh, somebody from Germany and she said, ich spreche mit dir at a romantic dinner or something, you are going to remember it. If you just uh, read it on a flashcard or in an app or something like that, it's not so easy to remember. Um, unfortunately, most German courses do not take so much care of that. Um, and uh, that's why we have created another course that I would like to show you very quickly here. Uh, it's based on a coherent story instead of uh, just having random dialogues. Um, this course uh, teaches you German from A1 to A2, and we will publish a second part very soon that will go all the way up to B2. The story starts super, super simply and gets more and more complicated. It's a slightly absurd story. Um, it has, it's about two sparrows. One of them dropped out of his nest and was raised by uh, a kid on the balcony. And he's always following this human family. It happened in Berlin after the city was reunited. And uh, it's a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a family saga somehow. 
told from the perspective of that sparrow. So a bit absurd, sounds a bit like childlike, but it's actually not, uh, it's made for adults. And the idea is precisely that. You hear the story, you hear words and phrases in a context. Um, with that, you always have, of course, the, the text itself with audio. You have very deep uh, explanations on grammar and pronunciation on video. Uh, you have many exercises. You have audio exercises for download uh, that will help you with exactly that, listening to expressions, many times reacting to them. So you can download them on your phone, go to the, go to the forest and uh, practice it there and uh, use it as, as much as you want. Um, so that works even without a teacher. Um, yeah, the course is uh, pretty cheap. Uh, it costs around 20 euro per month, um, depending on where you live because of the tax. You will see the exact price at the checkout if uh, you're interested. But uh, I uh, have this offer here. If you click on the link that I'm sharing in the, uh, in the chat, uh, I think it's not clickable, right? I should click on it so I can, uh, I can share it. Um, then uh, we give you the first month for free. So basically 30 days, you can try the whole course without paying anything. You can cancel it during that time. Um, and uh, you can, for example, download all the audio exercises, keep them forever and not pay a single cent for it. So uh, I, would like to, uh, I would like to ask you to check it out. There is, there is no risk. And, um, uh, but you have to uh, subscribe and, uh, or you have to join until the weekend. Then this offer will close. Um, I have a few questions here. The second part of Jens and Jakob will be published this winter. So the part for B1, B2, it will be published this winter. We don't know exactly when, um, but uh, stay tuned, subscribe to our newsletter. If you do that, uh, also through the same link, um, you can win one of three textbooks. So the course exists also as a book in a book format. Um, of course, then without all the deep videos and interactive exercises, and all of that, um, and you can win one of three. Um, the book is available basically everywhere where books are sold. Uh, Amazon, all Amazon marketplaces should have it. Um, yeah. Um, okay. What else? Where can I buy the book? Yeah, that was the question. All your exercises are great. Thank you. Um, if you have the book, know the book, and the online class are separate. Uh, so uh, the 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 online classes are much 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 more uh, into depth, and uh, you have a lot of more pronunciation exercises. And um, it's for English speakers, but we are working on an addition for Arabic and for Spanish. Uh, both will come also this uh, this winter. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, I would like to, so I think this is enough for the advertisement um, advertisement <laughs> block. Um, check it out, uh, check out the story, Niklas. It's described on the, if you follow the link, uh, you, you can see a description also of the story. Um, make sure to click on these links now because once the session is over, they will disappear. So uh, just click on the link that, uh, yeah, I can share it again. Um, open it in another video um, and uh, then uh, you will be able to, to see it. You can look at it afterwards. You can also meet me uh, in person, not in person, but online in a personal room where we can also talk right after this meeting. Um, the link will be shared with you in just a few minutes. I think five minutes before the end, um, uh, the Expolingua team will share the Zoom room and there we can discuss any questions you might have about learning German, about the courses, about the book, whatever uh, is on your mind. Japanese, please. Yeah, this will still take a little bit of time, unfortunately. Um, cool. So much for the, for the advertisement. I also wanted to show you, of course, uh, well, about the third question, because we said like, yeah, when should you care? Which case should we choose? This we discussed shortly. What's the right form? The good thing is, um, um, the good thing is that there is a system and it's called Resenese Mormon um, and in, in, in brackets I write Sera Sera if you also want one for, uh, for the genitive case. Basically these are all possible endings. So how does it work? We write these words on a list, on a table, okay? Rese, nese, mormon, sera, sera. So this is what you need to memorize, these stupid words. Rese, nese, mormon, sera, sera. 
once you manage this, this is the system. This is the masculine endings. This is the feminine ones, neuter and plural. And then the first line, you have the nominative endings, accusative endings, dative, and genitive. Okay, these letters here, the O and the E and the A, they are just to for you to remember it easier. So actually, it's res and s and r But if you don't come, I don't know, from Czech Republic or Poland, where they are able to pronounce something like that, then you might want to say mormon and sera sera, like in the song. Okay, uh, let's do an example. The article, okay, definite article, nominative. Der Vater, you see the R ending here. Die Mutter, you see the E ending. Das Kind, you see the S ending. Die Kinder, uh, E ending. Okay, Rese, that's in the nominative. Uh, let's do another example, Dativ. Always after mit, we always have Dativ, so that's why I chose this. Mit dem Vater, okay? Mit der Mutter. So vocalized R, we don't say R, we say A, uh, but, uh, but we write the R. Mit dem Kind, mit den Kindern. Remember this one, uh, dative plural is my friend, always has an N at the end, because in dative plural, we always have N endings, everything. Mit den vielen schönen Kindern. Okay, um, yeah, so basically when you know which case to choose and you know like where am I, feminine, dative, okay, you can, you can find out what is the, what is the uh, ending. It gets a little bit more complicated when we add an adjective. Now I need this gray area, but the good thing about adjective endings is um, they are unfortunately not the same as the res and res marman sera sera, but uh, there are only two options. An adjective has an A ending or it has an N ending. And when you're in this gray area, then it has an A ending. You see der gute Vater, die gute Mutter, das gute Kind. And it would be the same in, uh, in, in Akkusativ, für die gute Mutter, für das gute Kind. So you have the A at every adjective ending. And out of this gray area, you have the N ending. Yeah? Die guten Kinder. And here in Dati, for example, mit dem guten Vater. And here also you see Dati Flora is my friend, always at the end, mit den guten Kindern. Okay. Um, yeah, that's basically the most important things to know about that. What happens when we have non definite articles like ein instead of der, ein instead of. Uh, D. By the way, of course, how do you remember that? I mean, um, the grammar is all, uh, like, I mean, the order here. The, you might remember the words, and then you need to remember this order. Um, grammar is always chauvinist, so masculine goes first. Then you have feminine, then you have neuter, and then you have plural. Okay, that's, that's the, uh, the deal somehow. Nominative is the most important case, um, the one that we use in every sentence, because it's just a basic form. Accusative is the second most. When we have an object, usually it's an accusative object. Dative still less important, and genitive we can always avoid. So we group them basically by importance, so you don't get mixed up uh, in, in these two. Okay, um, yes, so you know that um, with ein, we have this issue that we don't see the gender for the masculine and the neuter. Okay, uh, if I say ein Vater, how do you know that it's masculine? You can't, because ein Kind is the same, it's the same. Eine Mutter, that's fine, but ein Vater, ein Kind, that doesn't work. And the plural, of course, also, because we don't have, like in Spanish, you have, I think you have something like un, unos niños or something like that. You would have a, um, you would have a, uh, uh, an article also in the non-definite form. In German, we don't have that, so we don't see the gender anymore. Okay, so what happens then? Um, well, the adjective takes over this, what I call gendered ending. Because when we add a, an adjective, then we have an occasion to hear the gender. And we use that occasion, okay? So we don't say ein gute Vater. Here we had the E ending, you remember? But of course we have the E because we have the gendered R ending here. We don't need to hear it a second time. The gendered ending, we want to hear it once and only once. Okay, here we don't hear the gendered ending with the, uh, with the article, so we put it to the adjective. So you see the R goes here, the S goes here, and this follows the whole system basically. Okay, um, yeah, that's basically the res and mormon 
uh, system. Uh, of course, in the course that I published, you have a very long explanation on it and uh, you can download it. And uh, yeah, you can also ask me uh, questions about it, I think, after the, we will see if we still have a, a few minutes maybe here, but it would be great if you could come to the other uh, room. I think there are a few questions here that I haven't replied yet. Um, Sarah means, uh, yes, Spanish speaker Sarah. Of course, these words, they, they mean something. Reza means nothing. Nesa, not as far as I know. Mormon, it means something. Sarah, Sarah is, means will be in both uh, Spanish and Italian as far as I know. But this is just, uh, yeah, just an aid to, to remember it. Of course, um, don't forget, this is not something that you can do when um, you're speaking. You can't go and say, oh, let me think. Is there a proposition? No. Is there a dual proposition? No. Is it a direct object, indirect object? Hmm. Uh, yeah, OK, it's an indirect object. OK, indirect object means dative. Dative, so the word is feminine. So let me check. Feminine, aha, uh -huh, dative. So I'm here, dative mormon. So it will be an order. No, I mean, you see how long that takes. It doesn't work. So this is a perfect tool for you to study when you're writing. For example, when you're in an exam, you put a note next, and you just write it, S -N -S -M -M -M, sera, sera, okay? Uh, your teacher or the examinator will not understand, even if they do understand, it doesn't matter. Um, you can always check if your endings are correct. Just by writing this, paint the gray area, and, and that's it. Use that also as, a, as an aid uh, when you're writing, when you're doing your homework, um, put it somewhere next to your computer, on your desk, uh, on the toilet door, wherever you see it a lot, okay? Great tool. Don't use it when you're speaking. When you're speaking, at least when you're at A1, A2, beginning of B1 level, uh, when you're speaking, um, it's more about making mistakes and learning from them. Okay, uh, great. What other questions? Uh, yes, the recording will be published. System was usually helpful. Okay, that's right here, Ruth. Thank you. Um, Claudi is enjoying it. Great. <laughs> um, um, bist du Engländer, Deutsch? Nein, ich bin Deutscher und ich spreche auch ein bisschen Englisch. Uh, yes, the follow up meeting, you can see uh, the link on, in the chat. Um, save this link, please. If you lose it, it's very easy to go to the follow up meeting in five minutes. You go to the Explingua website, you scroll down to my talk Thursday, 5 30, and the link should be published there. Uh, yes, good tips for choosing dative accusative when, when speaking. As I said, it's more about the courage to make a mistake and learn from it. It's, um, it's this thing. You will, you will learn it by time, but not by, um, not by ignoring it. So I think this may be, to wrap up the session, um, an important distinction. I'm not telling you you should ignore the grammar, not at all. It's very, um, uh, it's very important that you, uh, that you learn the endings, that you learn the concept, what is dative even, what is accusative, what does that mean, so you understand how the German language functions. But when you want to be able to apply it correctly, uh, what is important is that you have heard, um, I don't know, uh, mit einem Freund so many times that you know automatically that this is correct. And then you will also know why, because Mormon and it's dative, and so you have M. Um, yeah, Miss Naminga, any good, any, no other tricks? Not sure what tricks exactly. So as I said, there's no magic tricks, yeah, unfortunately. The language is complicated. That's why we make these, that's why we make these courses, because uh, we know it's hard work. I don't believe in these ideas. Ah, oh, you can learn it five minutes a day, and by next Tuesday, you will be fluent. No, you won't. Um, it's hard work, and that's why we think the hard work should be fun. So we designed this course. Uh, so it uh, so it's supposed to be uh, fun. So uh, yeah, I think I said a little bit about these three things. If you have more questions, come to the follow up uh, meeting. Um, you can find these links uh, here. I think I'm going to share the link to the follow. No, I think the follow up meeting is not so far. No, it's the, the, the lowest one. And the special offer, don't forget it, it will um, run out on Sunday. So uh, check it out uh, before the weekend and you can reach it over 
uh, this link here that I'm sharing. I would kindly ask you to click on it now because once uh, we close the um, presentation, it will be gone. Um, yeah, I hope I see many of you in a second. And uh, otherwise, thank you very much for taking part and have fun learning German. <laughs>